Um, but thinking about brand first, so you, you want to establish that brand. Um, your brand is really your office's personality. Um, it's your department, who people perceive you as. So you're thinking about your name, which we sometimes get to control. We have a little bit of control of that. Um, it can be things like the logo and then even the services that you provide, the ways that you support students or support the university. Um, so those are all elements of your brand. And when we create a strong brand, we are able to successfully do a few things which are listed here. Um, a brand will help you to gain awareness. So when people understand your brand easily, when they can get connected to you and remember who you are, that awareness helps you, of course, um, and then that can lead you into the marketing side of things. Um, a strong brand also helps us to establish that loyalty. So we want to try to create trust from our students, our alumni, the stakeholders that we're serving. Um, and so with that, we can be consistent. We want to establish a strong voice as well. So part of our personality, our office's personality is a voice. Um, do we come across as humorous? Are we more serious? So those are all little things to be thinking about. Um, and when that's consistent, we can see customer loyalty. Um, and then also just think about how you can differentiate yourself. So all of our offices are pretty different. Um, we, we provide different things. Um, so how can we um, make sure that that story is being told, that people understand what it is we specifically do? And we want to make sure that they can easily understand it. So try to break it down. Um, I love this little graphic that I found here that shows the difference between branding and marketing. So thinking about branding as your overall identity, your story, um, and then, like I said, how you're using that to build trust and awareness versus marketing is more so connecting that brand. So that established brand and connecting it to the product that you offer or in many of our cases, the services that we offer. And then with marketing, we have to create campaigns um, that drive our students or our audience to us, to using us. All right, so what we did, and this was largely, um, Suzanne kind of started this when she started this role, was she developed some brand standards for us. Um, they've changed slightly over the years. We've recently changed our name. So we, we go through some rebranding every now and then. But um, overall, we did take from the university's brand standards to basically map out our own. And a good example of this is the color palette that the university does use. For the most part, we use the primary and secondary color palette for most of our branding and marketing. I would say the difference is our brand, our overall brand uses the UNCC uh, color palette. Whereas when we do some of our marketing, especially event marketing, we play around with colors, we have a little bit more freedom with our design choices. And so you won't always see us just using these colors. Um, so I always recommend just start with that. Take a look at the university's um, brand web page. They've got an entire list that you could pull from to help you create your own brand standards. Um, we also have a marketing guide that you all will have access to. Um, I am going to provide access to our 23-24 marketing guide as our current one is currently getting um, updated by me over the summer. So there will be some slight changes in there, but um, having access to this guide will be super helpful for you all. Um, basically, Suzanne did a really wonderful job years ago of mapping out different components of marketing that our office is going to stick to. And included in that is things like physical, uh, excuse me, physical marketing versus digital marketing and the strategies that we employ around both of those things. We think about relationships with our customers, with our um, stakeholders. And so there's relational marketing in there. Um, there's social media components. So all of that is in there. Um, and I hope that that will be really helpful. We would love to share that. Um, and then another little thing with brand that I really love to stick to is I always encourage people in our office to pull photos from the university. Um, UCOM does a great job of taking photos from various events. You can also invite UCOM to come to your event to take photos so you can get some nice professional photos. Um, so trying to not use stock photos as much and um, trying to use our own photos. Um, and I always encourage staff in our office office to, it's okay if you're not a professional photographer, you can certainly take um, photos as well and help us establish our own stockpile of career center photos. 
All right. Um, so social media platforms. So I've put on here um, the list of some of the main ones, the ones that usually come to mind, the more popular ones. Um, and then I've got some question marks over there. So I'll get to that in a moment. But of course, we know that the students that we are serving um, are largely active on social media. Social media is really important in this day and age. Um, and so that's probably why you're on this call because you're trying to figure out how to manage the different social media platforms and figure out how to use them. Um, I think social media it, it is fun. I have a lot of fun with the role. I have a lot of fun working with the students that I supervise who assist me with these initiatives, but there are some challenges with it. Um, of course, when students think of the Career Center as an example, um, we might not be the first account that they're really excited to follow on Instagram. Um, so that can be a little bit challenging. So we have to try to make it fun um, and relatable for them. And then the other piece with social media is that um, social media is always changing. So that presents a challenge because we have to stay on top of those changes. Um, the most social media platforms, if not all of them, are using algorithms. So they are building um, algorithms for the user. Um, so based on the user's um, searches and who they're following, who they're connected to, all of those sorts of things build the algorithm and push content to that person. Um, not to mention that there are a lot of social media sites that will um, it's intentional, but they don't like to um, be outspoken about it, but they will push certain types of content as well. Um, so that is something that the social media platforms themselves are also doing. So you have to stay on top of that and understand um, how you can do that so your content does get pushed and seen. Um, so I've just broken it down here. Facebook is an interesting one. We still use it in our office, but the focus is more on our alumni, our non-traditional students, and our parents. Um, we definitely see Facebook trending down for our Gen Z students. Instagram overall remains one of the best um, platforms. It reaches many um, different generations, so we can target um, a lot of students, alumni, um, parents, and other stakeholders through Instagram. So that is probably our main platform is what I would say. Um, and we focus on short form content. So we create reels in our office and we also create carousel posts. Um, so they can be infographic or they can be photos. Um, and we find that for some accounts, um, Instagram will push reels more than they will pu push other types of content. So that's why we've infused them both. But with our voice on social media, um, we do use humor a lot of the time in our posts. And so we actually find a lot of success with using things like memes and creating our own memes and those actually get pushed um, and are really successful. So you have to play around with that and we'll talk about that. Um, LinkedIn is professional social media. So we use that to target our employers, our alumni, and then college students as well. Um, college students are the largest audience that uses LinkedIn. So you can definitely consider LinkedIn. Twitter, we don't use that anymore in our office, but it's great for those text-based posts, starting conversations, sharing information, um, and also sharing like images and um, memes if that fits your, your voice. And TikTok is a new one or a newer one. It's gaining popularity. There's always something, TikTok is always in the news about, is it gonna go away? Is it here to stay? Um, and so it definitely battles with Instagram as one of the top social media sites. We do now see some students that prefer TikTok more than Instagram. Great. Is that for another reason? We found it really hard to build our audience on TikTok. We've been on there now for um, a little over a year, and um, it, it's really hard to get traction to have students actually following us. Our content per can perform well, but it shows up to random um, people and new people, but it doesn't always um, mean that we're going to gain a follower from that post. So that's been interesting. Um, I put over here YouTube, Pinterest, Snapchat. Those are things that also can be used. Other universities are using those things. We use YouTube to post our presentations, sometimes our meetups, sometimes informational um, videos that we've created. Suzanne in the past had a videographer, and so she worked on a bunch of projects to create videos. So we do use YouTube um, for that. And we're also playing around now with 
using um, our content from Instagram and TikTok and recycling it to YouTube shorts. So they're now creating basically reels on YouTube as well. Um, and then Pinterest and Snapchat. So those are things that you can find students using and you can find footing there to reach out to students. All right, so some social media considerations. Um, so these are some great questions to jot down to help you process um, if you're just new and getting started with social media and starting your accounts or you're trying to figure out how to make your accounts successful. So these are some of the things that we take into consideration and that I want you to be thinking about. Um, you do need to think about what platforms are going to be best for your audience, but also what platforms and how many you're going to be able to um, manage and balance with your time. So for the most part, I would say if you can manage Instagram and Facebook, then those can be your priority. If you have the bandwidth to balance more, then you're gonna try to figure out which ones are gonna be best for your audience and the best use of your time. Um, and then you're gonna think about, well, how are you gonna be organizing this content? What is that gonna look like? And we're gonna talk through some strategies about that as well as strategies with using um, schedulers and management platforms. Um, and then who in the office is gonna be managing these platforms? Are, do you have student workers who are able to assist with this? Can you hire student workers who can assist? Um, and then along with that, is there a budget that you can put towards social media marketing as well? All right, so I've got here a screenshot of our content calendar. This is our current one from July. So I know this slide looks a little busy. I do apologize for that. Um, but with building a content calendar, the easiest thing I think that you could do to start out with it is to not make it super complex, follow a repetitive cycle. So um, originally before I took this role and when I got started with it just to ease into it, our content followed a cycle of this day was gonna be this type of post. And that's the example I've provided here. So you can lay that out and that makes it a lot easier. From there, you can maybe assign certain days to certain people in your office um, who maybe are more interested in a certain topic. Um, and you don't need to post every single day either. So a lot of times with many social media platforms, posting every single day or posting multiple times a day isn't the best strategy. Sometimes you can get away with posting um, as little as like three times a week and that can be successful for you. For our office, our sweet point is between four to six posts a week. Um, and that goes for Instagram and Facebook. TikTok is a little bit different. We don't post as frequently, but with TikTok, um, one strategy a lot of creators on there find to be successful is to actually post a lot, post a couple times a day to gain traction, to gain um, views, and that can um, correspond to additional followers. So you do have to think about the different platforms still. Um, but mainly with this, when I'm talking about building a content calendar, I'll be focusing on Instagram and Facebook. We do use the same content for Instagram that we use on Facebook. So it gets published at the same time um, and um, so it all corresponds. And so that's helpful too. Um, other things that you could do as ideas. So you'll see, um, and I know it's kind of small, but you'll see some of the things that we do is it is event promotion. We do, we do wanna share information about upcoming events and things that we're hosting in our office to try to get students to use those services. But we also try to do um, a balance of following trends that are going on on social media right now. And so we'll do that every now and then again. We'll post for holidays. We'll post something that's more inspirational or more fun. Um, and so there's a good balance of different things that we're doing there. Um, I find that students resonate really strongly with seeing photos of campus or seeing other students. So if you are able to have students active on your um, page, that can be really helpful as well. All right, and then I've got another example of a content calendar here. This one I just pulled from um, the web. So that's another thing I would say, if you don't wanna build yours from scratch like we have done, you can easily find templates online. So feel free to Google that and you'll find some that might work better for you. Um, we do have a separate um, spreadsheet for Instagram and Facebook has the spreadsheet, LinkedIn has a spreadsheet, TikTok has a spreadsheet. So that's how we keep it um, all together. 
I have one student who manages um, each of those platforms. So that is also, I know, a blessing that I get to have. Um, so some additional steps for building that content calendar and making it a little bit more concrete. Um, determine what your spreadsheet is going to look like and then establish which platforms you're going to want to use. Um, does that mean you're going to have multiple spreadsheets like us or are you going to try to consolidate it into one to make it a lot easier for you? Whatever makes most sense for your organization, for your brain, I think is what I would encourage. Um, thinking about the posts, so I just went through a couple of different examples of types of posts that you could create, types of content, um, but a good thing to think about as you're trying to figure out what types of posts you could um, put together is what is the content meant to do? So is the content there to just gain visibility for your office? Are you trying to get people to come to your page and gain that traction so that that translates to them coming into your office or going to your web page? What does that look like? Do you want to try to gain more followers um, and establish a following? Um, are you going to share information that's just educational and beneficial for the audience and for the viewer? And is that what you want the goal to be of that? It doesn't mean that you necessarily want them to follow you, but it could create a following from that person. So think about what you want that content to do. Um, and then of course, determining which staff should be involved. Um, I'll use our office as an example. I've mentioned a few times, I do have a small team. So it's me along with my social media intern. And then our employer engagement team also has a social media intern. So I work with them. Um, but I make sure to get all of the staff in the office involved. I will either use our um, office-wide chat to let them know that I'm filming content for the next hour and I need somebody that's available. Um, we have a rather big office, so we have the flexibility to do that. Other times I will request the help of our student workers who are not on the social media team, but of course they love to get involved. And so I work with their supervisor and ask for their schedules, or I will invite them to help when I know that I'm gonna be doing content in the next week or so. Um, so I know and I'm aware of which staff usually are more interested in helping with content than others. So I definitely rely on them. I find that also it makes for better content when the person is actually interested in being involved with it. Um, so it's always a good idea to figure out who in the office um, enjoys being involved with this. And then of course, the more people that you can get involved, the better it's going to be. Um, um, let's see here. And then post frequency. So I mentioned earlier, just playing around with that. Um, to get started, you are just gonna have to post, post at different times, and then that's gonna start building Some pro tips for um, when you're going to make content. Creating templates can be really helpful. If you have somebody in your office who is good with Adobe um, Illustrator or Photoshop, you can have them create templates and those can actually be imported right into Canva. And then Canva is super easy to use. I think a lot of people can get trained on that very quickly. And then it makes it easy for people to just go in there and edit the template in Canva. They might just have to edit the text in there and update it, things like that. So creating templates is one of those ways that um, makes some content really easy to post and um, really efficient. Um, another tip that I have is to create timeless content. So if you are ever experiencing a dip where you have a break, um, it's a slower part of your year, I always use that time to create content that I can use later on to get myself ready. And that content being timeless means that um, it doesn't follow a trend. It's not something that's going to be irrelevant in six months, but it's something that I can definitely use um, and will remain relevant. Um, so think about the things that your office focuses on. Um, what ways do you serve students? And so what are some of those posts that you can create that are going to always be consistent and remain steady? Um, and then one little thing to note is we don't focus solely on just event promotion in our social media. I started, when I got here, I started leaning more into, instead of just asking people um, and sharing with people that we have this upcoming event, it was more so the idea of creating an inviting digital space. 
So I wanted our social media platforms to be a place where people related to the content, where they found it funny and welcoming, um, especially with a career center, we can easily have an image that we are stuffy or that we are super serious. You have to always be professional when you're coming to our office. So I wanted to help create the atmosphere that that's not necessarily the case. There's a time and a place for that, but we also try to make career development fun. And so I use social media to create that digital space. And so not every post is going to be come to this event or letting people know about event promotion. It is supposed to be fun. All right, so some additional with content creation. Um, I mentioned earlier types of posts. So we have reels and videos that are performing really strong and consistently being pushed by Instagram, um, TikTok, of course, and now Facebook as well. Um, so reels are a strong consideration for when you're creating content. And then carousel posts and infographics, so text-based posts, um, images, those types of things. So those are the main types of content that we would focus on with our main social media platforms. Um, it is time consuming, I've mentioned this a few times, um, but when you stick to a schedule, when you figure out a schedule that works and know this week, I only need to create two reels and the rest of them are gonna be carousel posts, it helps you to balance your time and figure out um, what you need to do. Um, for all of the content, um, and sometimes this can be a struggle, we try to keep quality at the forefront. So we want to always be trying to pull high quality video and photography. So that is where having that stockpile of photos and videos to pull from really saves me a lot of the times. Um, there are times where we do have to work full with um, employers, for example, and so sometimes they have to send us content that we're going to be posting for them. And so a lot of times the battle is we need this to be better quality. So we're always trying to push for that and ask for that. Um, so don't hesitate to ask for that. Or if you have somebody working on something and you just want it to be a little bit better, I do think that little extra effort and that push can go a long way. Um, and then, of course, just figure out what's resonating with your office. I mentioned this earlier but figure out what students are responding well to. Um, I know for our office, what works for us might not work for your office. So you really just have to um, figure out uh, what is the best fit. All right, so scheduling and management. We use um, a couple of different tools to manage our social media. So if you are if you're very new to social media and doing it for your office, then you may be wondering, um, do you have to be always staring at your phone and posting things and at the ready to post? If you're more familiar and you've been doing social media for a little bit, you may be aware of some of the ways that you can use scheduling tools. So I definitely recommend that. Um, I do not want to be at my phone at odd hours of the day um, because with our posts, most of our audience is active pretty consistently between 7 and 9 p.m. So I don't want to have to be dealing with that. So scheduling tools are a lifesaver. Um, if you are working with a limited budget, I would recommend just using the, um, it's through Facebook, but Meta. So Meta manages Facebook and Instagram. It is free and there are scheduling tools as well as analytics tools with Meta. Um, when you create your accounts, um, I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, when you create your accounts, if you haven't already, for the most part, I would recommend them to be business accounts so that you do have some of those extra tools through Meta. Um, and so if you do have a little bit more of a budget or you're finding that you're going to figure out how to get a budget because that's just not working for you, it's not sufficient, there are many accounts that you can look into that um, they do have a bit of a cost. Some of them are a lot more costly than others, but they do make a world of difference. Um, our office uses Sked Social, and that's actually what this screenshot is that you're seeing. Um, that is our planner. Um, so you can see the little P there for posted and then what's scheduling. So we've got stuff that's upcoming. Um, we pay for that. We are able to manage, um, I believe it's five total accounts with that. So we have um, we have also on there TikTok as well as LinkedIn. So that's very helpful. 
um, where Meta, you can't do that. You only have Instagram and Facebook. Um, there are some other ones. I've put Sprout Social here in Hootsuite, um, but there are plenty of other platforms too. So I'm not saying that these are the best ones and that these are the ones that you can, should consider, but they are the more popular ones. Um, and I've also put some benefits and some um, negatives of each of these. So for the most part, most management um, platforms are going to be able to manage multiple accounts. So that is um, a huge benefit. I would not recommend paying for an account management tool that only manages one account. You should be able to find one that can do multiple. Um, with Sked, Sked, Sked Social, excuse me, some of the things that I really love about it are there are some AI features now. So that's been really fun to play around with. And I do like the analytics tools that are on Sked Social as well. Um, I find it really easy to train my students to use this platform. It's very intuitive. Um, and you can do all the little things that you want to be able to do right from your desktop instead of your phone. So that's what I really appreciate it about it. Um, we have another person in our office who used to work in marketing as well, and she loves um, Sprout Social. Um, and so that would be the one that she prefers. What I love about Sprout Social, and you don't have to have a plan with them to um, view them, is they have really amazing webinars. So I would recommend if you can get on the Sprout Social listserv so they can send you the webinars that they're doing. I find those to be really informative and they've helped me to grow as a marketer as well. Um, and then some of the negatives. So you have to play around with the limited amount of platforms per plan. So weighing the costs per, per option that you have. Sprout Social does tend to be the one that costs the most, um, so it is a little bit costlier. Um, and then some of them also limit the number of users that can access the plan at one time. So you wanna pay attention to that too. And then I just wanted to share here and make a point that as much as we are focusing on creating content and getting it scheduled and um, making sure that our content calendar is built, we also have to think about um, once something is posted, the idea is that we want people to interact with that post and our content. So that means we have to also go back and engage with those people. So part of the process and part of your time has to be devoted to engaging with your followers, um, engaging with other accounts. So our office tries to, as much as we can, engage with other offices on campus because if other offices have, are seeing a certain amount of students that are following their account, by interacting with those accounts, we could also try to get those students to be aware of us and gain some visibility with those students as well. That's one part of it, but the other part of it is just um, the camaraderie and being able to support other offices on campus and support their content. I love getting to watch other people's content, so supporting each other on there. But engaging with followers, you're gonna get messages in your inbox, so you have to devote time to responding to those messages, all of that sort of stuff. So that is a big chunk of your time as well. And I'll add here that some of these management tools and platforms, they allow you to message people right from the management tool as well. So you don't have to go into the app to respond to the messages. You can log into your platform here and respond to messages there. So some benefits with that as well. And then this last little bit is analytics and insights. So of course, we want to try to get an understanding of what is working well because we want to improve our efficiency. We also want to figure out what is working and what's not working so that we don't have to waste our time putting in our energy into things that aren't working and aren't resonating with our audience. Um, and so you want to figure out what is getting a high reach because a lot of people, when they first start looking at analytics, they are looking at, well, did we get a lot of likes on this post? And that's not all of it. You, you do want to get likes. You do want people to resonate with your content. And when they're liking it, it means they're appreciating it. But you also want to look at the reach. So is that post getting pushed by that algorithm that that platform is using? Is Instagram itself pushing that out to new people so that you can try to get new followers? And so sometimes when somebody's looking at our post at face value, it has maybe 30 something likes, which is on the lower end. Well, if we go into the analytics and look a little bit deeper, it could have been one of the highest reaching posts. So it was pushed. And so the idea is 
well, that content was pushed by the platform. So we need to look at how we can improve that content so that it continues getting pushed, but that it's also resonating with those students. So we wanna improve the likes that it's getting as well. And so there's some elements that you can look at um, when you're looking at your analytics through these websites. Um, this is a screenshot of what it would look like if you are gonna use the option of just using meta. So I've pulled the screenshot of what the planner looks like, um, but on the left-hand side there, you will see those are all the analytics tools that you can look at. You can go to your messages for both Instagram and Facebook and respond to them right there. And then you'll also see the analytics of who is it reaching? Um, how many new followers was it? Where were these followers? Are they in the Charlotte area or is it getting somewhere else? So all of those are built in right there. Um, and I put this screenshot here because what I really appreciate about Meta, especially because it is free, so it's accessible for a lot of different people, is um, so with Meta, they are trying to push Instagram through Facebook. So um, you may have noticed if you're an active Facebook user that you're probably starting to see a lot more reels getting popped up on your feed or recommended to you. So you're seeing more short form video content. That is because they are trying to push people from Facebook over to Instagram. So maybe you go to that video and you go to the comments. The comments are actually um, from Instagram. So they're gonna try to get you to switch apps and go over to Instagram. So that's what I actually like about this because we base our schedule on our Instagram followers for both um, Instagram and Facebook. And so it is looking at our Instagram followers and it will tell you the best time to post. So last week, our best time to post, oddly enough, was after 9 p.m. Um, so it gives us some really helpful insight as to when our followers are active. Um, but yeah, so that is our um, analytics and insights. Like I mentioned, um, you with analytics and insights, depending on the platform that you choose to manage your content, you'll get used to how each site operates. So you just have to spend a little bit of time playing around with that, seeing what they offer and how it works. Um, what we typically do with our analytics is we will do a semesterly report. So each semester we will look at which of our content was the most high performing, where was the reach at, um, what types of content was really resonating. So we have a full, um, uh, uh, PowerPoint that we go through when we put our information in. I'm actually for this upcoming year going to switch it to each month we're going to do um, a social media recap and look at our analytics um, more um, consistently and more frequently. Um, so that's something that depending on your office's bandwidth, you may decide to do it more frequently or less frequently. So that's something, again, one of those things that you just have to play around with. All right, and so that is what I have for us today. Um, I've put my information on here so that if you do have questions for me um, or if you have questions later on, you can always reach out. We are gonna address the questions and the chat in just a moment, um, but I just very quickly wanted to thank everyone again for being here. Um, we are of course on social media, so if you'd like to follow us there to check out our content and take a look at the things that we are doing, if that is helpful for you, you can do that. But I also wanna say I would love if the people that are here, if you do manage an account on um, let's say Instagram, Feel free to put your Instagram in the chat and we can all follow each other. I always find that really helpful. Um, if we are following each other, that gets the ball rolling and that of course helps the algorithm as well. So feel free to drop that in the chat so people can see what your office's name is. Um, but other than that, I appreciate you all and I think we will pop over to answering some questions.